Hey students, in this video we're going to cover some sample problems from the homework set 2 for Delta Math. Uh, we're just going to focus on the equation part right now. I think the identities where you like sub and values and stuff should be pretty straightforward. So just grab a calculator and work through some of these with me. So for this first problem, we have to find the angles between 0 and 360 that satisfy this equation, and we're going to round to the nearest tenth of a degree. So we have negative 2 tangent theta plus 1 equals 3 tangent theta minus 7. So first, we need to isolate our trig function. So let's add 2 tangent theta. We're going to add 2 tangent theta, but then we're also going to add 7. We, we need to move this negative 7 over here, so we'll add 7. So we'll get plus 7, and so we simplify this stuff, and we get 8 equals, what's that going to be? 5 tangent theta, and then uh, the, plus, the negative 7, positive 7 cancel. We'll next divide by 5. So we get 8 divided by 5 equals tangent theta. So if we're looking for theta, we need to use an inverse trig function because they tell inverse trig functions tell us what angle has a particular trig ratio. In this case, we need to use inverse tangent because we have a tangent value. So we're going to have tangent inverse of 8 divided by 5 is equal to theta. So now make sure your calculator is in degree mode and then just put this value in. So we're going to get tangent inverse 8 divided by 5 and I basically get 58 degrees. So 58 degrees is equal to theta. So if we draw our angle, like our representative angle for instance, so this is 58 degrees. Now remember, tangent is the slope of a line segment. So if tangent, we need the other value where tangent is positive. So one uh, tangent is positive in quadrant one. We need the other value, and that value is going to be in quadrant three. So all we have to do is add 180 to get that angle. So if we add 180 degrees, we'll get, uh, we'll call this theta two. So theta one is 58 degrees and 180 degrees plus 58 degrees, which is what, 238. So 238 degrees equals theta 2. And if we were in radians, we would do exactly the same thing, except uh, we would add pi, and the angle 58 would be in radians. You know what, actually, let's do this. So we have this in degrees. So then we'll say like theta 1 in radians would equal, let me just put my calculator in radian mode. Uh, we would get 1.0, we'll say 1.01. .01. And then if we were doing this in radians, then theta 2 is going to be pi plus 1.01. .01. I mean, you can leave it like that for me. But uh, let's see, pi plus 1.01. .01. 4.15, so 4.15. Those would be the two values in radians. In degrees, as delta math has requested, you would get those two values. So we isolate the trig function, use the inverse trig value, and we find all of the angles between 0 and 360, which is why we get 2, because we should always get 2, unless the angle is uh, one of those quadrantal angles. So the second thing we have is find all values where uh, cosecant theta is uh, 3 cosecant theta minus 3 equals 0. All right, so let's tweak this a bit because it's going to be too easy because it's only going to be one value. Let's make this a uh, 8, nah, let's go with 11. All right, so we'll go with 11. So then we're going to have th uh, 3 cosecant 
theta equals 11 divide both sides by 3 so cosecant theta is 11 thirds so remember cosecant is the reciprocal trig function for sine so if cosecant theta is 11 thirds it's going to mean that the sine of the same angle is just 3 divided by 11. So now again, we want to solve for theta. So theta is going to equal sine inverse of 3 divided by 11. So you put your calculator in degree mode because I'm back in radian mode from the last question. And we're going to get, so we're going to get two values, right? So theta 1 is going to be our angle in quadrant 1. So sine inverse of 3 divided by 11. I get 15 point, it says to the nearest tenth. So we'll say 15.8 degrees. So if we look in quadrant 1, assume this angle, our theta 1 equals 15.8 degrees. Then we get a different angle in quadrant two that also has 15.8 as a reference angle. To get that angle, uh, so if this is 15.8 degrees as well, then 180 minus that gives us this, we'll say this double arc angle for instance. So theta two is uh, 180 minus our reference angle, which is 15.8. So 180 minus 15.8 degrees, that is what, 164.2? 164.2 degrees. So in this case, what we did was we isolated the trig function and we used the reciprocal trig function because we only know sine, we can only use sine, cosine, and tangent on our calculator so it, if you're given a, a cosecant value you're going to need to go back to sine if you're given a secant value you need to go back to cosine and if you're given a cotangent value you need to go back to tangent which is just flipping the ratio over and then applying whatever inverse trig function you need to do all right so that is how we would do that one uh, next is we have to solve uh, using, all right, so in this case, our answer is going to be between 0 and 6 pi. This is a good indicator for radians, not degrees. Uh, let's see what we get. So we want to subtract 1, so minus 1, minus 1. So we get 2 cosine, I'm going to write x divided by 3 instead. So x divided by 3 equals negative 1. We divide both sides by 2. So cosine of x divided by 3 equals negative 1 half. And so right here is where we're going to say, well, x divided by 3 equals cosine inverse of negative 1. I can write a half. So cosine inverse of negative 1 half is equal to x divided by 3. So cosine is negative 1 half in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. So now this is where you need to know the unit circle or at least reference the unit circle. Though negative 1 half is a special trig value, we should know that the, the angle that has a cosine of negative half in quadrant 2, uh, we're going to say, I guess it's x, so we'll, we'll say uh, theta or whatever. So the angle in quadrant 2 is uh, 2 pi over 3 and in quadrant 3 it is 4 pi divided by 3 if you look at the unit circle so in one instance we have x divided by 3 equals 2 pi divided by 3 to solve for x we multiply both sides by 3 so x is going to equal 2 pi in the other case is x divided by 3 equals 4 pi divided by 3. So x is going to equal just 4 pi. So both of those values are between 0 and 4 pi. So you would use both of them. So the, at the end, all we did was we applied our inverse trig function. They get, that gave us two special angles. And then we set the angle x divided by 3 
equal to the two values that could be possible. And that's how we got our answers. For the next one, uh, still in radians, uh, this is going to be a pretty uh, quick one. So, uh, you know what? Let's make this uh, two, instead of this function, let's make it two sine, uh, what's a nice enough number? Let's go with two sine 6x plus the square root of two equals zero. So the work is the same thing. Isolate the trig function. So we get two sine six x equals negative square root two. And we'll divide both sides by two. So we get the sine of six x is negative square root two divided by two. And so now what we know is six x is equal to sine inverse of negative square root 2 divided by 2. So there are two angles where that's true. Sine is negative in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. So when, whenever you see the square root 2 over 2 or negative square root 2 over 2, you should know pi over 4 is the reference angle. So in quadrant 3, that's going to be 5 pi over 4 and in quadrant 4 that is 7 pi over 4 because that's where sine is negative quadrant 3 and quadrant 4 so our two equations are 6x equals 5 pi divided by 4 so x is going to equal 5 pi if we divide by 6 or multiply by 1 6 we get 5 pi over 24 and in the other case, we could get 6x equals 7 pi. Uh, why did it do that? Equals 7 pi divided by 4. And so x is going to equal 7 pi divided by 24. Both of those values are between 0 and 2 pi, so they both work. Now, the reason we augmented this is that if we just solved the, if we, let, let's erase this, if we just solved 2 sine x plus the square root of 2 equals 0, which means 2 sine x equals negative square root 2, we would get sine x equals negative square root 2 divided by 2. And then it's just us literally looking on the unit circle to see whether this is true. And we would just get x equals um, 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. So uh, the different work comes if you have a multiple of some sort where you just then divide these angles by whatever that number is. So if it was just this, we would get that as our answer. So again, I, I tweaked it so that it was slightly different because you may encounter that. Uh, next is, oh, a quadratic one. So we have to solve uh, secant squared theta plus 7, secant theta plus 6 equals 0. So it's quadratic. Quadratic means we're going to have to factor. So remember, if you have a quadratic, what are the factors of secant squared? Well, one of them is secant theta. The other one is also secant theta. So secant theta times secant theta. That's how you get a secant squared. And then we need factors of 6 that add up to be 7. That's going to be plus 6 and plus 1. So we set that equal to 0. So in one instance, we get secant theta plus 1 equals 0. Uh, that's going to mean that secant theta is equal to negative 1. Remember, we can't, we don't have a secant button on our calculator, so we need to use the reciprocal trig function, which is cosine. So cosine is, so cosine theta is going to equal the reciprocal of secant, which is still negative 1, because the reciprocal of negative 1 divided by 1 is 1 divided by negative 1. Both of those still equal negative 1. So anyway, cosine theta equals negative 1. So between 0 and 360, where does cosine equal negative 1? Uh, theta is going to equal cosine inverse negative 1. That's just on the unit circle. Uh, theta should equal pi. So now you, for the special angles, you have to recognize them. Oh, theta is not pi because we're in a rate uh, degrees. That's going to be 180 degrees. 
Again, I don't care if you use a calculator. When in degree mode, you should always use a calculator. Because even if it's a special angle, it's going to tell you that angle in degrees. In radians, you're not going to be so lucky. You need to know the angle in radians. So if this had been 0 to um, 2 pi, you telling me uh, whatever pi to, whatever pi is, 3.1415 or whatever, your calculator is going to give you that. It's not going to give you pi. So in radians, you need to know the exact angle if it is a special angle. But again, since we're in degrees, you could actually do cosine inverse, negative 1 on your calculator, and get 180. The other part is we could have secant theta plus 6 equals 0, which is going to mean that secant theta equals negative 6. And again, we don't have a secant button, so we're going to assume then if secant is this, then cosine has to be negative 1 sixth because that's the reciprocal of 6. And so theta is going to equal cosine inverse of negative 1 sixth. Uh, all right, so now cosine is negative in quadrant two so we're going to get one theta that's here so we'll say theta one is here but cosine is also negative in quadrant um quadrant three so let's get theta one first so theta one is going to equal cosine inverse negative one six make sure your calculator is in degree mode so quit uh cosine inverse of negative one six I get 99.5 degrees, 99.6 degrees, so 99.6 degrees. So we need to find the angle, the reference angle for 99.6. The reference angle is just 180 degrees minus 99.6. We need the reference angle to find the angle in quadrant uh, in quadrant three. So let's see. 180 minus 99.6 was 85.4 maybe 80.4 whatever so 80.4 that's the reference angle so then in quadrant three so the angle uh, so theta two is going to equal 180 degrees plus our reference angle of 80.4 that is 260 point four we could have also subtracted 99.6 from 360 and gotten the same thing uh it doesn't really matter so uh theta 2 is uh what we say 260.4 all right so what we did was we factored uh because it was secant we used the reciprocal trig function which is cosine one of them was a special angle so we can look that up on a unit circle the other we have to use the inverse cosine to get the initial angle that's in quadrant two and then to find the angle that is in quadrant three, you have to find the reference angle, which is going to be 180 minus whatever your given angle is. And then you add that reference angle to 180 to get the angle that's in quadrant three. All right. And so then what is next after this one? Oh, going the wrong way. Uh, we have three sine squared theta plus sine theta minus 6 equals negative 4 sine theta. Uh, let's add 4 sine theta. So uh, we're going to add 4 sine theta here as well. So we get 3 sine squared theta plus 7 sine theta minus 6 equals uh, 0. So you multiply the 3 and the negative 6. That's going to give you negative 18 sine squared theta. So 3 sine squared theta times negative 6 is negative 18 sine squared theta. And you're looking for factors of negative 18 that can add up to be 7. Uh, I would go with 9 sine theta and negative 2 sine theta. We're going to factor it just like we factor a quadratic. So we'll get 3 sine squared theta plus 9 sine theta minus 2 sine theta minus 6 equals 0. And so now we're going to factor by grouping. So we take out the common factor of 3 sine theta. So we get 3 sine theta times sine theta 
plus 3. My, we're going to take out a negative 2. So minus 2 times sine theta plus 3 equals 0. Cool. And so now we can factor out the uh, sine theta plus 3. So sine theta plus 3, because that's a common factor, times 3 sine theta minus 2 equals 0. So in the case of sine theta plus 3 equals 0, that's going to imply that sine theta equals negative 3, which we know on the unit circle is impossible because all of your sine values are between negative 1 and positive 1. So for this one, we get no solution. But over here, we get 3 sine theta minus 2 equals 0. So 3 sine theta equals 2. Um, sine theta is going to equal 2 divided by 3. And so we're going to do sine inverse of 2 divided by 3 is equal to theta. So we're going to get one angle that's in quadrant 1, which is our reference angle, if it's in quadrant 1. So that's going to mean that we get, so again, we're doing this in degrees, right? So sine inverse 2 divided by 3 is 41.8 degrees. So 41.8 degrees is, that we'll say, our theta 1. And theta 2, that's in quadrant 2, is 180 minus 41.8, which should be 138.2. Let's find out. Uh, yeah, 138.2, so 138.2 degrees. So those are the two angles that make this equation work. The first one had no solution because sine can't be less than negative 1. Uh, the next one is we have to use an identity. Uh, this might get kind of involved. Uh, let's see, cosine 2 theta. So we're going to use the identity that cosine 2 theta is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So in the place of cosine 2 theta, we're going to have negative 3. And then we're going to have cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta and plus 14 sine. You know what? Actually, we can combine some like terms here, right? So let's subtract sine theta. Let's subtract this sine theta. And uh, let's also subtract 8. So we're going to do minus 8 and minus sine theta. So we get uh, plus 13 sine theta minus 5 equals 0. So now notice that outside of the parentheses, the other trick function that we have is sine theta. So that means that we also want to get rid of the cosine squared theta. So cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. Fine. So we get negative 3 times 1 minus sine squared theta minus another sine squared theta uh, plus 13 sine theta minus 5 equals 0. So we can combine like terms. So we get negative 3. And then we're going to get plus. All right, so negative sine squared minus sine squared is negative 2 sine squared times the negative 3 is going to be plus 6 sine squared theta plus 13 sine theta minus 5 equals 0. So now if we shuffle some stuff around, let's say negative 3 uh, minus 5, this is just going to be minus 8. So we'll just make this a negative 8 instead. So negative 8. And so now it's back in the form of what we did on the previous problem. Uh, we have 6 sine squared plus 13 sine theta minus 8. So if you multiply 6 sine squared and negative 8, you get negative 48 sine squared theta. What multiplies to be negative 48 adds up to be 13. I would go with 16 and 3. So let's see, we want a 16 sine theta and negative 3 sine theta. I know you're thinking, well, Mr. Martin, what about 8 and 5? They both of them have to be positive or both have to be negative to get a 13 or a positive 13. So in this case, they'd have to both be positive. So that's not going to work. 16 and negative 3 work. So we get 6 sine squared theta plus 16 sine theta minus 
3 sine theta minus 8 equals 0. Uh, we can divide the first one. We can take 2 sine theta out from the first one. So 2 sine theta times 3 sine theta plus 8. We're going to factor out a negative 1. So minus 1 times 3 sine theta plus 8 equals 0. So, e, so then we get 2 sine theta minus 1 times 3 sine theta plus 8 equals 0. So now i got to clear some of this stuff out. Let's clear out this identity that we don't need anymore. So we'll clear this out. So two things uh, happen. Either uh, 3 sine theta plus 8 equals 0, which means that sine theta is going to equal negative 8 thirds. So negative 8 thirds, that's less than negative 1. So in this case, we get no solution because negative 8 divided by 3 is like negative 2 uh, and 2 thirds. So that doesn't work. Uh, sine can't be less than negative 1. So throw that one out. So the other possibility is 2 sine theta minus 1 equals 0. So 2 sine theta equals 1. Uh, sine theta equals a half. And so theta is going to equal sine inverse of a half. At this point, we should know that the two angles that that's true for are theta equals, oh, in our degrees, I was going to write pi over 6. But that's going to be 30 degrees in quadrant 1. And in quadrant 2, that is 150 degrees. So those are our two values. So look, all we did was we applied this identity here and then just solved the quadratic after that. Next is um, we have 7 cosine squared theta. Uh, it's the same trick. Uh, I don't want the video to go terribly long, but you're going to turn cosine squared into 1 minus sine squared theta. And then you're going to multiply that by 7 and solve whatever equation that you get. I don't want it to be long. We're already at like 27 minutes. So uh, do. The, oh, that's it. All right. So eh, maybe we got time. Then. That's the last one here. So let's actually work this. I thought we had more. So if we multiply by 7. We get 7 minus 7 sine squared theta uh, plus 5. Uh, let's move all this stuff over. So uh, minus 2 sine theta. Then we subtract 2. So minus 2 equals 0. Uh, I guess we could have moved everything over to the right. It doesn't really matter right now. So we get negative 7 sine squared theta. 7 minus 2 is 5, so we're going to have minus 2 sine theta minus plus 5 equals 0. We're going to magically multiply everything by negative 1. So 7 sine squared theta plus 2 sine theta minus 5 equals 0. And it's the same trick. Multiply 7 sine squared and negative 5. That's negative 35 sine squared theta. And since you need a positive 2, that's going to be 7 sine theta, negative 5 sine theta, because they multiply to be negative 35, add up to be positive 2. So 7 sine squared theta plus 7 sine theta minus 5 sine theta minus 5 equals 0. You factor out a 7 sine theta is going to give you sine theta plus 1 and then minus factor out a negative 5 is going to give you a sine theta plus 1 as well equals 0 uh, factor out sine theta plus 1 so sine theta plus 1 times 7 sine theta minus 5 equals 0 so in the case of sine theta plus 1 equals 0, we'll get sine theta equals negative 1. And so theta is going to equal sine inverse of negative 1. So theta is 
uh, it's three pi over two in radians or 270 degrees. Unit circle. This one's on a unit circle. And then in the other case, we have, uh, what's that? Seven sine theta minus five. So seven sine theta minus five equals zero. So seven sine theta equals five sine theta equals five sevenths. So this is the positive value. You want to get two. So theta is going theta one is going to equal sine inverse of five sevenths, which uh, on the calculator. Uh, so sine inverse five divided by seven is forty five point six degrees. And then theta 2 is, all right, so 45.6 is the reference angle because it's in quadrant 1. So 180 minus that is going to be, what, 134.4? 180 minus 45.6, yep, 134.4. Uh, yeah, all right, so that's it. So that is us solving a bunch of equations that have to do with trig. Maybe there's another video for the identities, but that's straightforward. Substituting the value, simplify as necessary. Thanks for watching.